Good day, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Homie Picks. This time is just me and Lou. We're going to do basketball. Lou, what to do, bro? What up, sir? How's it going? Playoffs in the, NBA, in the NFL not looking too good, but um, shout out to your Nets. Uh, doing what they do, I, I guess. Becoming the new age uh, Golden State Warriors in the East. <laughs> I know. We, we, have, we have created the new super team, which is, as a Net fan, it's weird to say that, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's things you would think you would never hear, you, you would never say, but I guess that's how people in Golden State felt years ago too. But yeah. um, before we before um, we get into it, um, you did have something you were saying, and I know we, we the, the 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 camera got cut um, short. So uh, what were you going to say? You, you were saying something about the player league. So go on. yeah, I mean, I, I don't. The Nets pretty much set the blueprint right now that it's become a heavy, heavy player dominantly uh, I'm all for that I'm all for the players having power but this is like I think to extreme at this point where you have players dictating who the coach is when they want to play you know what teams they want to play for um, and then you got these teams sacrificing the entire future like the Nets did to sacrifice the entire future to build this team around I mean they sent away eight draft picks uh, which is crazy uh, you know you think back to when the Knicks traded for Carmelo and what kind of hole that put the Knicks in to build around in the future. Now it's a completely different scenario because the Nets are pretty much established um, at the three predominant positions in the NBA, point guard, shooting guard, and the forward position. So um, I just don't like the way the league is, is trending. I would love for it to go back to the old days where, you know, you had to build from scratch and build it from the ground up and then sign those players if they wanted to come over. Um, I just think, you know, Harden sitting down saying, well, I want to go to Brooklyn. And then Houston making it happen, kind of bad for the for the league. But we should see, we shall see. I mean, maybe this is the end of the diva era. Um, you know, all the divas that complained pretty much got moved. You got Harden, you got Westbrook. Um, you know, LeBron picks and chooses where he wants to go. So all all the divas have gotten where they wanted to go. So hopefully, this is the end of it. Yeah, I mean, I I, I definitely you know I, I definitely feel that you know the, the way the the league has definitely trended in that way. Um, and I think it's trending that way a little bit around around the time of of of, of LeBron's the uh, the ESPN decision, which to this day I still feel that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen to have. Yeah, I agree. One hour special to announce where you're going to play at. Like, yeah. He, I mean, and granted, you can't pick. I mean, you can't choose time periods. But if that had been the most damn ridiculous thing, if Michael Jordan would have had a press conference say. I'm going to go to the Washington Wizards like that. Right, right. I mean, I, I get it. He used the money and the proceeds to go to the Boys and Girls Club of America. I'm all for that. But you can handle that way different. Um, the fact that none of the teams knew until like five minutes before you went on the air, it's kind of crazy. Um, you know, it's reminiscent to the Nets. The Nets finding out that Kevin Durant signing with them via ESPN. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, again, that's it, another proof that it's becoming a – too predominantly a player in the league. Yeah, I think social media and the use of media in general, you know, has become more. It's, it's become more of a hand in hand thing when when it comes to sports and the league itself. Um, but we'll see how this trend, like everything, kind of goes, you know, by the era, by the decade. So let's see what the next alliteration of the NBA looks like. Um, but in terms of today's alliteration of the NBA. Uh, you know, we got the MLK Day. Basketball is always always at the forefront when it comes to that. Um, our first game that we're going to talk about is the Bucks Nets. That's a 7:30 game on TNT. Uh, Giannis, Giannis Middleton and boys. Uh, you know, they 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 were the they were the favorite in the East um, until the Harden trade uh, came. So. Who do you think is going to win that one? Well, at first, I say TNT won overall because they have a marquee matchup on TV uh, on, on a Monday, which, which going into last week, we everyone thought this game was going to be the net, you know, the backup Nets versus uh, Milwaukee with all the, all the shenanigans going on in the background. But, um, man, it would be difficult not to take the Nets right now. Um, Harden in one game dropped a triple-double. And, you know, granted, it was against Orlando. You know, I'm not saying, you know, they're the bottom of the barrel, but 
they're the middle of a pack order kind of team, and to to have one game um, to put up a triple double that's that's impressive. Um, I'm gonna go with the Nets on this. Um, I, I read an article where they say the Nets are playing probably the most highest level of street ball ever. Um, so that's what they that's what they're gonna do this season. Pretty much play street ball. Um, Harden can create a shot whenever he feels like it. KD can create a shot whenever he feels like it. Um, and the rest of the guys just have to knock down open shots and get offensive rebounds. So uh, I think this is going to be a good game to watch. Um, I, you know, Giannis has to go in there strong and make himself, you know, situate himself very, very early in the game. But uh, I'm taking the Nets in this one. Yeah. I think that might be the best game of the day um, in terms of TV, um, in terms of national TV ratings. Uh, I think the Nets are also going to win this one. And, yes. Uh, of course, a big surprise of my homer. <laughs> well, I'm not that much of a homer. I did pick Buffalo <laughs> over Baltimore, so that, that was pretty sad. But um, but yeah, I uh, you know it. Harden, you know he 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 definitely had a great chemistry with KD, and it was almost like they never stopped playing basketball. Um, and you know. I think he's the first player to have a 30-point triple-double in a team debut, which is pretty crazy. Um, and I love his soundbite after when, you know, they, act, they asked him, you know, you know, you know you're the, um, I forgot, I think the seventh or fifth, some somebody, some some number player, you know, that had a triple-double, you know, for a team debut and the first one with a 30-point triple-double in the team debut, how you feel about I just wants to win. Like that means nothing to me. I want to win, and I hope he has that focus. You know, you know a lot of, a lot of superstar. You know, and I think, and I think that's how a lot of superstars they build up their reputation. It becomes more of a me thing. Um, and when you want to win, you have to kind of separate the me, and 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 think about the team. So, you know, if if, if he's if he's gonna do whatever it takes, and he was playing, he was actually played defense yesterday, which is impressive. Yeah. He was yeah. he he was on that he was on the ball a lot you know steals you know bodying up people so he, he was and at times he got switched to Vucevic and Vucevic is not for some reason like and maybe it's me and you you know and and everybody else who watches maybe we're we're from the era where if you have a big man bodying up on on a little guy you go you, you should you should take him like and you, Vucevic just stays on the outside so it makes it easier for Harden to defend him who is six five. Whereas the seven foot dude, like, but he made it easy for him to defend. So I mean, you know, Harden was staying in his own. Of course, the Bucks play a little differently. Brooke Lopez can play in the inside and the out, mm-hmm. and he's smart enough to, you know, identify. Oh, I got some little me. I can have a take a shot over him, or I could body him, in, you know, inside the paint and find an open man. So or find the, the mismatch. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I think the Nets uh, we're going to win. Uh, Kyrie's back. Um, Finally, <laughs> you know, and, yeah, and they gotta build chemistry. And this is they can't afford to say, "Hey, you know, we we try to build chemistry this this year. We'll get them next year." I think they have to attack now. Like they have to build that chemistry. They have to go into there thinking we need to win every game we play this season, um, just to have that camaraderie going into playoffs. Uh, you know, Le- Le- LeBron had you know a, a half a season with AD, and they won the chip. Um, so. Pressure's on the Nets, you know, and, and uh, hopefully they, they bring a title to New York. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, hopefully. You know, hopefully. You know, offensively, I'm not worried about them. Defensively, that's the only thing that matters to us. Can we be a top 15 defense? And if everybody buys in, everybody's actually geared to winning that, then, you know, I'm not, you know, I don't see we're going to be a top five, but if we could be in that middle of the pack going up, then, you know, we can we can make some noise. Um, the next game we're going to talk about is the first game of the day. The Magic and the Knicks. Uh, Magic came off that loss to the Nets. Um, Knicks right now are playing. They're playing pretty good. I mean, yeah, they had some losses. They had five losses in a row up until um, up until Sunday. But yeah. um, the Knicks overall have been playing pretty good. But even with the losses, they're not, you know, the Thibodeau's been playing, they've been coaching them pretty good. Yeah, they're playing a lot of team ball, um, which is great to see. I just don't think we have that person that can score whenever they want. We don't got that KD, that, that James Harden, that you put the ball in the hand and they know they're going to get a bucket. Um, Randall's playing absolutely out of his mind. It's a completely different Julius Randall. And I just watched Obi Toppin just go for a dunk in the fourth quarter. Um, 
against we're up like 25 right now in Celtics, which is great to see. Um, but yeah, they they're playing very good aggressive team ball. They're actually playing defense, um, which was is something last year you can say about a Knicks team. Uh, anybody can come in here and score. Shoot, I could have went to the Garden and scored on them last year. Um, but they're, they're coming off some tough losses. Um, MLK Day is a, is a good day to go out there and put your best foot forward. Um, I'm expecting my Knicks to come out and play, perform. It's probably going to be a close game. I don't see it being a blowout. I can see this being one of the games that's going to be close down to the wire. But um, I'm hoping to take my Knicks with a W. Yes. Yeah, in terms of a win-loss, I actually see the Knicks winning this one also. Yes. Uh, I think you have athletic bigs, especially Mitchell Robinson, who can definitely size up against Vucevic. Even though Vucevic may have the weight advantage, but Mitchell has the athletic advantage over him. Um, he can he can give him fits. Uh, Orlando is a tall team. That's, that's one problem. But the Knicks have good height, and Barrett needs to just – focus on his shot because yeah, he is um, struggling mightily. He, um, yeah, mightily, man. I can't I can't speak to it enough. Um, the one thing I've noticed in watching, I've watched every game so far this year, he's a different player when he has the ball in his hands. Mm-hmm. When he gets the ball early and can either make that decision to drive or pull up and shoot, he's a much more confident player. When you put him in the corner or when you put him on the spot up three and the defender's running out at him, it's it's that's where he struggles. Um, I think he just has to get better there. Um, and it's a sophomore. You hit that sophomore wall. I know everyone goes through and they hit that sophomore wall. But um, he, he's one player right now, especially playing in New York, he can't afford to hit a sophomore wall. Um, that's just not something that should be happening. Um, so he needs to figure it out. Hopefully he figures it out fast. Yeah, and I think he will figure it out. Um, if anything, I, I'd say the Knicks probably will win by five. Um, if anybody wants to uh, bet in terms of the spread, I don't know what the spreads are going to be at this current moment. I haven't checked, but um, I would say probably a five-point win. So if they fall in that in that range, that'd probably be a nice bet. But overall, money line definitely go for the Knicks. Um, next one's going to be the two thirty game, which is Timberwolves and Hawks. Um, Timberwolves are still without uh, Chronicle Towns, who I mean, my heart goes out to that brother. Uh, he's had a really sh- yeah. rough stretch in his life. Um, he has COVID. His mom died from COVID and other complications in her life. So he he's definitely reeling um, in his pain. So, you know, basketball aside, you know, I, I, Kat's a pretty good dude. So I, I hope he gets better, um, speedy recovery, um, and, and prayer for his family and healing, period. Um, they're going to give a, a really tough Hawks team who – um, they, they, uh, they're up and down. The Hawks have played lights out one night and then completely blacked out another. Yeah. So it's like they get up for the good teams and then everybody's like, eh. And then that's why they have seven losses. <laughs> the, the Hawks easily could have had 10 wins by now. But they they have mental lapses. And that could be they're a young team. Um, they, they, they may be missing that serious veteran presence to – you know, get on them and be like, nah, this ain't what we're going to do. Because um, you have really good young players in that team. Uh, Johns Collins and Trey Young, that's a pretty damn good tandem. Um, yeah, good hunters on there, yeah. And, but Timberwolves have some pretty good pieces too, even though the record is three and eight. Uh, D'Angelo Russell is showing why he is a pretty damn good point guard. Um, Malik Beasley, shout out to Scotty Pippen. Uh, <laughs> He probably would not be watching that game. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, the Timberwolves have a pretty okay squad and not the greatest team, but it's they're playing that tough West. Um, but who do you see uh, winning this one? Um, I'm actually going to chalk it up to Minnesota. Um, I know Atlanta's without Bogdanovich, who's out with a knee issue. You got Gallinari, who's out. Um, so I think, yeah, like you said, they're definitely missing that veteran presence. Um, those veterans that want the ball late in the fourth quarter, Bogdanovich is one of them. You know, um, Gallinari is one of them, likes the ball late in the fourth quarter. Um, and I, I think Minnesota might scratch this one out. Uh, this might be a coming out game for Anthony Edwards. Uh, you know, the number one overall pick last year hasn't really made, made a name for himself. Um, besides that boneheaded play he did last week in the game. Right after I gave him praise, like, you know, he don't get enough shine in NBA. He's a rookie, man. Man, that's, that's tough. But he needs, he, I think he needs to step it up, especially now with 
uh, with a cat being out. Um, he needs to be that, that bona fide scorer that they drafted him to be. So um, I'm expecting this to be a step out game for him. Uh, see him go off for maybe 20 or 30 points here in this game. And Minnesota squeak out a win. Yes. I, I like the same thing. I like the the, the, the Timbers for the same reason. Um, I think Anthony Edwards needs to really step up. Like you are a top, you are a top prospect, so you have to show up and show out. Um, James Wiseman has been showing out for the Warriors. Um, Patrick Williams for the Bulls has been showing out. So you you have to show why you were part in that. You know you were you were that top pick. So you got quickly from the Knicks, the twenty fifth pick. Quickly is right balling. Balling right now. Quickly has been balling. So, you know, you you have – and, I mean, you would, you would hate for him to be one of those picks like um, – uh, what, what was boy from Cleveland? Uh, Anthony Bennett. Anthony Bennett, yeah. You would hate for him to be Anthony Bennett type, and that may be a thing against Anthony's being co selected. <laughs> but uh, you, you would hate for him to be to be remembered as a Bennett and not an Edwards. So, right, right. Um, even though um, – Greg Anthony's son, Cole Anthony, on the, on the Magic, he's he's having a great um, rookie season so yeah. far too, which that which that means that's gonna be it should be a good race for um, rookie of the year. But um, in terms of just this game alone, um, Trey Young, you know, he is the engine, but um, I think D'Lo D'Lo's played really good against Trey Young. Um, even going back to when D'Lo was on the Nets. Um, you know he's he's you know he's he's kind of gave um, Trey Young fits, and that's probably because of his height. Um, you know if he stands in front of him and he's athletic enough to get in front of him, um, you know he can cause Trey Young to, to 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 have some misfires. But then again, Trey Young is a wild card because that boy can shoot from half court too. So, yeah. and I think Dilo takes these you know these spotlight games because uh, he, he's playing in Minnesota now, so they're not getting very much TV time um, on the national stage. So I think Dilo is going to definitely take advantage. Of the spotlight game and ball out. Yeah, I, th- I think Minnesota could probably squeak that one out. Um, yes, they, they should prove themselves the four, the four and eight. Um, Hawks should drop the five and eight from them from that game. Um, the next, the next uh, MLK Day game is going to be, which I think is going to be another great game. Suns and Grizzlies. That's a five o'clock game on TNT. Uh, Chris Paul has shown everywhere he goes. That you team, bring that magic. You bring that magic. <laughs> that man is the that man is the freaking ventriloquist, man. Because every all his all, all the puppets after that start start balling, man. Um, and it's a good. It's a good carryover from 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 where the Suns ended in the bubble. Um, yes. it was great momentum, you know. But they were going eight, you know. Um, and then you add a player like Chris Paul, and I know a lot of Suns fans were sad when Ubre left them because he was a fan favorite there. Um, but Chris Paul, when you get if you get to play like Chris Paul on your team, you know he's he is that engine. Like he's probably the best point guard you're gonna have um, there. Well, you probably the best point guard you've had since Nash. So, you know Rubio was okay in spurts, but he ain't no Chris Paul. He's not gonna get you to playoffs like that. And Chris Paul, one of those players who can get you to the playoffs. Yeah, and, and I think Phoenix was a perfect landing spot to him. Um, great young talent. Devin Booker is a great all-star. Um, DeAndre Eaton, another good young player, a good piece, a big man. That Chris makes magic happen with big men. They all, they all start to shine. Um, and if you think back what Phoenix gave up to trade for him, they gave up Umbre, Ricky Rubio, Taj Jerome, Jalen Laquist, I never heard of him, and a 2022 first-round pick. Mm-hmm. Like, you compare that to, you know, some of the other trades that happened over the summer – and previously, that, that's that's a steal. Yeah, you know, they got him for a bargain, um, and he's producing. That team is playing phenomenally well, um, and their record showing for it. And I think this is a great opportunity for Devin Booker to learn from somebody who is like him, who's scrappy, who's hungry, who you know had a fight to get his name out there. So um, I, I like what Phoenix is doing. Um, I, I'm taking them to win this game too. Um, John Rent, you know, reigning Rookie of the Year. Coming back, it's the second game back from that injury um, to my sprain ankle. But um, I'm expecting Phoenix to, to, to pretty much put their foot down and, and stake a claim in the West as they're one of the big dogs. You know, they can easily easily finish fourth or fifth and in, in, in the division. Um, so I'm taking Phoenix in this one. Yes. I'm taking Phoenix also. Um, I think, you know, whoever's going to be guarding Chris Paul, that's a hard, that's a hard guard. 
you know, Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Like that's that's tough. Um, and this, and the Grizzlies outside of Valachunas, um, they're still missing Jaron Jackson, um, who is a big piece to what they need to do. Um, great stretch for um, young piece too, but you know he he's he's still going to be out. Um, Morant, you don't know how the ankle's going to be. So it's it's you know, and granted, yeah, he's he's a young player, but you know, it has, everybody's body reacts differently to injury. So, and then you got a person like Chris Paul who is an ankle breaker, <laughs> and will lull you to sleep and, and embarrass you at times. So you know, it, it, I think the Suns have this one. Um, I probably will say maybe like a nine point win at best. Like, yes. Yeah, the the, the the Suns can come out fire, even though they're in Memphis and. You would hope, you know, the, the Grizzlies would have some, you know, mojo thinking about MLK, you know, and, you know, being that that was the place of his, of his, of his passing. You know, you would think they were, you know, they, they have played okay on MLK Day, but not against this Suns team. I don't see right. that happening. Um, we talked about the Nets Bucks, so we're going to go to the last game of the night uh, on national TV. There's many more games, but national TV, you got Warriors and Lakers. That's a 10 o'clock TNT game. Lakers are playing damn good ball, but they don't play that good at home, surprisingly. No. So, and then the Warriors are a surprisingly okay team. I wonder why. They got that little light skin dude over there. <laughs> Mighty Mouse over there. Yeah, man. Like, dude can get you 63 in, in, in the full game by himself, literally. By himself, so, um, but I still see the Lakers winning this game. Though I do too. I do too. I agree with you there. Yes, um, I still yes. see the Lakers. They're just Lakers are, are too big. They're literally the monsters right now. Like you know, AD and LeBron. That that's really much all they need. Um, and they surround themselves with better players than they did last year. Dennis Schroeder playing amazing. Marcus All is playing out of his mind right now in a system that fits his game. Specifically, he's a big man that can pass in and out of the double team um, and can knock down a three. So he's exactly what the Lakers needed. Definitely upgrade over of, uh, over Howard and JaVale McGee that they had last year. Um, and they kept all their other, you know, young assets and pretty much productive players. They got Morris back. They got, you know, Caruso. Um, they still got uh, – what's his face? Uh, not- Kuzma. They still got Kuzma. So um, – they're, they're built for the long run. Uh, let's see what moves they make going into the into the, the playoffs, into, you know, the trading season. But um, I don't think the Warriors have enough just to even hold a, a, a flame to what the Lakers are going to have right now. So um, you hope Steph can keep this team afloat so that maybe they can limp into the playoffs, possibly. But if the Warriors are playing in the East, I would definitely say they would have been one of the playoff teams. Being in the West, I think it's just too stacked against them. Uh, they're going to have to fight literally every game to try to get into the playoffs. Well, it's 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 going to be something. You know, I, I think I think um, AD show, you know, where everybody who wants to, you know, I guess wants to wants to um, uh, take the mantle, you know, from him, you know, as, as big man. Zion went against him and AD was saying – no. Oh, hold on, son, I got this still. <laughs> so, you know, and I and I think you know the Warriors. You had that with 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 Wiseman. Um, you had that with Wiseman, and Wiseman he's playing pretty damn good ball. Um, and I think he has, unlike well, unlike Zion, he has a more. I would say he's more athletic and more yeah, more fluid game though. Yeah, because Zion still has that. It's like that awkwardness to his to his to dribble, his dribble, dribble, get to the basket. Dribble, 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 get to the basket. Yeah, you know, so it's it's um you know it's it's um it's it's it's, it's not fluid, but of course you know we'll see um we'll see what we'll see what what um what Van Gunny does with Zion and and in terms of that, but as terms of the the Warriors, Wise is playing pretty good. Steph is electric. And you see why that man is box out office every freaking time he plays. Like, I think the only I think the other game, I forgot what game it was, when he only had one field goal. Like that, that was the most shocking thing anybody's ever seen. But yeah. 
but the man is doing it by himself. <laughs> he literally, literally is literally. doing it by himself. He's carrying the entire franchise right now on his back. He literally transported them from Oakland to San Francisco on his back um, going to this year. You know, Draymond's not the same player he used to be. Uh, we can all see that. Uh, you know, he, he still has a – he can be that quarterback for you, that point forward that you need, but Draymond can't put up triple-doubles like he was doing three, four, five years ago. Um, and this team is just not the same without Klay Thompson on the, on the yeah. court. Um, the only thing the Warriors have in their favor, one, you get Klay coming off another injury next year. And you get that Minnesota pick that's unprotected. That looks like right now, based on Minnesota's record, looks like it might be a top five pick. Yeah. Uh, again, so you're, you're arming yourself again. And they got they still have uh, Andrew Wiggins over there, who I think is, is he even playing or is he out of injury? Uh, he's playing, but you know, it's – So they need, his, they need to nothing. get him more involved, maybe boost his trade and do the same thing they did with D'Angelo Russell, flip him for a team that may want him. That's going to be hard to move that contract, but we've seen harder contracts move. We've seen the Westbrook contract move. We've seen the Harding contract move. So uh, it, it's possible. Um, I, I think the Golden State, this is probably their the year where they try to figure out what they're going to be next year. Um, I think they want to be contenders next year. So hopefully they can get Clay back at 100%. Steph's still Steph. And, you know, Wiseman becomes that dominant center that they've yet to have around him. That's the one thing Clay has never had Clay and um Steph have never had is a yeah. dominant center. Um, you know, they had Bogut, but Bogut wasn't that guy that can score whenever he felt like it. Right. So hopefully they, this is the beginning of the uh, building pieces for Golden State. But I'm definitely taking the Lakers to win this one. Cool, cool. Yeah, this it should be a Lakers. It should be a if they if they're playing locked in, then this should be a, this, they should smack them. Um Clay, I mean, sorry, Steph, Steph, shoot, at this point, Steph, Clay, and Draymond right now can, could, 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 could go for 64 points. We know who's scoring 63 of it. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's only going to be Steph and Draymond scoring only one point. So, like, it's, it's, it's not going to be a fair contest on that one. But I want to get your um, input on the Nets, the Knicks, and the Lakers for this week. Um, both all well, three um, other three teams, um, counting from Monday to Saturday, uh, the Nets have four games, the Knicks have three games, the Lakers have three games. Uh, just, just get your, your prediction of who you think is gonna, you know, like the record record wise. I can see the Nets pretty much going undefeated the next four games. Let me look at their schedule. So I we got Bucks, the- then we got a back to back against the Cavs, and then the Heat on Saturday. Yeah, that's all wins. Those are all wins. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with Miami because I expected them to come into this season with the same hunger they had at the, in, in, in the bubble, um, and you've yet to see that. Um, so it, it, it's a little worrisome on that front. Um, other than that, I'll give you that. Yeah, Knicks, they have – oh, yeah, for the Nets, I see that, I see that being uh, four now uh, as well. Yeah. Um, if anything, the- you know what? I'm 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 gonna be tricky about it. I'm gonna say we're gonna be three and one. Three I don't one. know. I think I think we may have a defensive lapse in Cleveland. Remember the Joe Kim Noah um, thing when he said, "What is it to do in Cleveland?" <laughs> like, we may get bored because it's a back to back in Cleveland. We may get bored and fall asleep. So- I don't know. I'm, again, like I said, they need to gel. They need that camaraderie. So I think those those games that normally they would take off and be sleeper games, they can't. Yeah. They, those are the games where you need to to try stuff that, hey, we need to run these plays that we're going to run in the playoffs, like, right now um, in this game while we can. We got, um, we got a special guest coming in right now. Oh, we do. Oh! The guest is here. Hello. We got, we, got, we, got, we got the Bulls fan resident. Uh, it's only to be on camera. I ain't, I ain't trying to be on camera right now. It's not camera ready. <laughs> Well, we just we 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 just finished it up. We were just talking about the over under what we think the teams are going to be for the for the for the week's end. Uh, we were just talking about the the uh, the Nets probably going to be four and zero for the week's end. The Knicks they got the Magic, the Warriors, the Kings. Uh, we're going to talk about your. I guess we can add your Bulls into this mix also. You know, since y'all playing. championship yeah. bound, baby, we go all, all right, the so way. You, this is all like here. Nobody stopping us. All right. So go undefeated. All right, cool. So <laughs> never lost. 
Never lost. Never lost. So yeah. back to you, Lou. Yeah. <laughs> Your Knicks got the Magic. <laughs> you got the Magic, the Warriors, and the Kings. And the Kings. Uh, I can see us going two and one. I think our. I think the Warriors still beat us. I, when Clay plays us, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think P, teams just show out against the Knicks. Um, so I can see Clay going off. Him having another 40, 50 point game. Um, I, I see the Knicks go two and one. We beat Magic. We lose to the Warriors, and then we beat the Kings to end that road trip. I, I, I go to him and also, but I think y'all lose to the Kings. There's something about the Kings being tricky. I don't know why. You know, it's, it's something about I, – I just have a feeling about that about, about that Kings game. Lakers have a, have, a, have, a, have a tough game at the end of this, but – well, they have a tough game at the beginning of it also. They got the Bucks, the Kings, and the Chicago Bulls without Michael Jordan. But <laughs> – What do you see? Way. We got Zach Levine. We got Laurie Markkinen. So, Wendell Carter Jr. Forgot about your man's. Well, I'll, I'll give you the big three. Oh, okay, my bad. My give bad. me the big my three. Bad. My bad. You got, we got three. four. We got five. You know what I'm saying? But let's give you the three. I mean, that's that's right. I mean, you, you know, in terms of top ten players, you got all top ten players. So never lost. Forget about that. <laughs> so, Lou, what you think about the, about about the Lakers? Uh, three uh, three games. I think their letdown game is probably going to be against the Bucks. Um, I don't know. That game is just – I got that game on Thursday night. Just uh, – TNT game, they're in, they're, in, they're in Milwaukee playing. So, um, not on the West Coast. Yeah, I, I definitely see the Bucks coming out. Giannis taking a claim for his MVP again this year. Um, I see them losing that one. And I think that's the only loss they're going to have this week. Uh, if I look right, I mean, they have – yeah. I see I got them winning tomorrow. Um, who do they play? They play on Wednesday. They don't play on Wednesday, Thursday. Yep. I see them beating the Bulls as well. Sorry, Paul. Oh, damn. So you're saying that the Bulls are not going to be undefeated. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> I, you know what? I actually think the Lakers actually may lose against the Bulls, though. I, I think – call me crazy. I think they may lose against the Bulls, and not because he's here, because it could easily smack the Bulls too. But I think – I mean, hold on, bro. But I'm just saying because <laughs> the Bulls are playing – Pretty okay ball. Like Donovan has been coaching these these boys up. The only problem is Kobe White needs to score that basketball, and he needs to be more efficient. Well, Levine, like as 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 much as everybody says, Katie was carrying those nets. Levine should be out with back problems, back spasms. The way he's been carrying those boys offensively, he has been carrying them, and he and he needs help. Like so, Kobe White, as good as he is, and I know he's a good second year player, but he needs to step up and be more efficient. But I think Donovan has coached him defensively. I think defensively, he, you know, like the, the, the Bulls are, are are playing a lot better. Um, I think the Lakers will definitely be, probably be a full asleep during that game. Um, and I think that's that should be a win for that should be one for them. But the Lakers probably go two and one. Um, well, being the Bulls being the, the only loss. ESPN got the matchup predictor ninety point seven percent for the Lakers again. Well, goddamn! But <laughs> um, overall, um, so you know that that that's our that three game. I saw three teams. You know, predictions uh, in the week. Um, you got many more bets and so forth. Uh, we'll come at you for another episode for playoffs. Deuces. 